All right, so let's take a little look at uh, what's going on at the boundary layer because that's so important to what's happening with convection. Uh, and to understand that, we need to talk both about the velocity boundary layer uh, and the thermal boundary layer. So the velocity boundary layer, which you uh, may have run into in your fluids class, um, is caused by the interaction of a free stream velocity, which is here u infinity, uh, with some kind of surface. Okay. So this is a flat plate boundary layer, and we have a free stream uh, velocity of u infinity. And as that flow hits our flat plate, uh, you're going to get some shear stress, okay? So this fluid is going to rub against our surface here, uh, and that's going to slow down uh, the, the fluid. The, the, the plate is actually going to create a drag on that fluid, uh, and so our fluid near the surface is going to slow down. Now, what happens over time, or over distance here, rather, as the flow moves left to right, is that that slower fluid then interacts with the free stream flow and that starts to slow down the free stream flow. And then so a layer initially just uh, right near the surface gets slowed down, but then this fluid is moving slower. So it starts to slow the fluid above it and then that starts to slow the fluid above that and so forth until at a developed boundary layer we see a velocity curve like this where we have a free stream velocity um, far away from the plate uh, and it gets uh, that velocity gets lower and lower in magnitude until we reach the no slip zone where our velocity is zero. The thickness of that boundary layer is described by delta which is a function of x, right? Delta gets bigger as we move along the plate because of that shear stress process. If you remember the equation for shear stress, uh, you'll recognize uh, this guy here. And all this here is saying is that the gradient of velocity in the y direction uh, times the viscosity uh, tells us what our shear stress is. So where is our shear stress highest? It's where our gradients of velocity in the y direction are highest, right? So here you can see the velocity is not changing much out here. It's changing a lot more down here. And in fact, over here, it's going to be really high, right? Because we're going to have a zero velocity at the no slip region, very close to a free stream velocity. Okay. And that's going to mean we're going to have a very big du dy here. And so our shear stress is going to be highest right here next to the, the edge of our flat plate. If we want to know the drag on the plate, uh, we have to integrate that because our uh, shear stress is not the same, right? It's higher here than it is here than it is here. Uh, and so to find that uh, drag force as a total, we integrate the shear across the area of the plate. So that air AS there is our surface area. As we said before, delta describes that, um, that growth of the boundary layer. Uh, and that growth comes because of the different layers of the flow slowing down. So initially just this layer slows down, but then because that's slower than the free stream velocity, it slows the one above it and so forth. Uh, and if we want to kind of sum up what this boundary layer image shows us is it describes the diffusion of momentum um, into the bulk fluid as a function of X. Okay, so there's an exchange of force exchange at this surface, right? This plate is taking momentum away from the fluid um, and that, uh, that negative momentum, that change in momentum gets diffused outward uh, over time uh, and distance as we move left to right. So we're uh, diffusing uh, momentum into, into the bulk fluid. At the same time, right, the third law tells us that drag is pushing the plate that way the plate is pushing the water uh, right to left. So now let's talk about the boundary layer because it behaves in a very similar way, uh, but it's not exactly the same. So we have to be a little bit careful uh, when we make our comparisons here. We're going to imagine in this case that just because it's a little easier to think about, I think our surface is hot um, and our free stream velocity is a little cooler, kind of like the example we did. 
uh, earlier. Um, and you can see that we have two parallel equations here. Here's our shear stress for our velocity boundary. This guy is our flux, okay? That's our thermal uh, flux of thermal energy. And again, it depends on, as you would expect, a dt dy, the, the gradient of velocity in this direction. Uh, likewise, it grows in the flow direction uh, so that we can say, that the thermal boundary layer is going to increase. We, we define uh, delta as the point where the, if the velocity is 99% of the free stream, or in this case, where the temperature is 99% of the difference um, from the surface uh, to the free stream temperature. So our definitions look the same, and the process is the same, right? Where is our highest stress? right here. Where's our highest dt dy? It's going to be right here too, right? As long as we're in laminar flow, as long as our flow regime doesn't change, we're going to have a high dt dy right here because that hot free stream fluid is going to be, or rather cold free stream fluid, is going to be right next to our hot surface. As we move this way, our thermal energy is going to diffuse into uh, into the fluid, right? So at this point, now this fluid right here is warmed up a little bit and it's going to diffuse some of that energy into the next layer. And so our boundary layer is going to increase with X in much the same way that our velocity did. Similarly, we'll end up with a temperature curve where we have a hot plate. Um, still, you know, significant dt dy's next to that plate, um, but then that, that gradient changes as we move out into uh, into the free stream. Oh, this is telling you that the, the little s's here are surface temperature subscripts. Finally, we can look at the two of these and think about them in terms of the overall transfer of heat. Um, so we talked about drag as being the integral of the shear stress. Well, our heat transfer is going to be the integral of our flux because just as shear does not stay the same, our, um, our flux value, our local flux value does not stay the same as we move in this direction. Uh, and so to find the total heat transfer, we need to integrate that flux over the area. And that's what this term is right here. Now it's important to notice that that H here is also a local heat transfer coefficient. It is not um, a constant in this situation. If it was, uh, then our flux would be constant, right? But our H changes, so we have a high local heat transfer coefficient here that in laminar flow is going to get lower and lower as you move along the flat plate. We can average that to find an H bar, uh, and you can see all that is is just uh, finding the sum of that coefficient and dividing by uh, dividing by the area. So a kind of weighted average of your local uh, heat transfer coefficients. Uh, and then one final uh, comparison here. We said the velocity boundary layer describes the diffusion of momentum caused by shear stress uh, and the diffusion of that momentum into the bulk fluid. Uh, the thermal boundary layer describes the diffusion of thermal energy uh, caused by heat transfer uh, into the bulk fluid. Um, again, caused by the interaction of the fluid and the surface um, as that diffuses into the body, into the bulk of the fluid. And there's our comparison of uh, velocity and thermal layers. Those are, it's a, um, a little hard to get your head around these, but it's a helpful way to kind of think about what's happening at the surface and the way that um, uh, our velocity fields and our temperature fields are uh, acting in similar manners.